everybody, welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina Kaya, I S T I N A. This is where we read books, talk about books, no special effects, no theme music. I haven't figured out how to do any of those things yet. Um, and my computer's really old, so it takes a really long time for stuff to upload. So um, I try not to do pictures too much either. I'm just not technically, me and my computer just don't work that way. But anyway, um, I'm a series person. I like to read series, so we're doing series. I'm always follow. If I pick up an author, you'll see the next one and a couple days later and the next one a couple days later. Um, I try to intermix between different authors. And uh, please check out Flashback Monday. We're doing the Romantic Times Magazine um, from 2009. And that magazine is just as valid today as it was way back when. Um, you can still find authors to read, books to read from that. Um, and Star Trek Fridays. I'm a series person. I like character progression from book to book to book. And uh, I also got a new series, If Then. Please check it out. If you like this author, then maybe you like this author. Today we are doing James Patterson's 14th Deadly Sin, and it was, the chapters are very, very small, which is good, I guess. Each, um, each character gets their own POV chapter. I was reading J.A. Jansen a while back, the J.P. Beaumont series, and whenever she did a combo with series, she'd have... The different characters each get a different paragraph, and it was like it was very unless you had the were very knowledgeable of the series and could hear the person you know the character in your head, you might not catch the transition between the the female character and the male character. You might not catch it. So, but in this, in James Patterson's book, the entire chapter belongs to that particular character, so that's easier for you to follow. And we've got several start. Yes, ma'am. What is up with you today? You're you're interrupting mommy's podcast. Wait a second. So we got four, five stories, five different plot lines in this book. We have we have a couple of. Um, character progression, character happenses. Our first up is, our, we have our, oh, Lindsay is a uh, sergeant detective in the San Francisco Police Department. And she has twice turned down a promotion, and it has bugged the crap out of me every time she does it. Just like Eve Dallas. However, Eve Dallas is a lieutenant in the New York City Police and Security Department. And she is allowed in the field to detective. Now, it's only when she gets promoted to captain do things change. Where in Lindsay's world, if you get promoted to lieutenant, things change. So, we've got a little conflict there. Um, and she has a partner, Rich Conklin, who she at one time slept with in between a breakup with Joe for a couple of days. And I was really highly, 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 highly against it. And I still don't like it when it's brought up and referred to. She had a moment of weakness. I will let it go with that because I was massively, totally, absolutely 100% pissed that she did. And then Richie had approached Cindy on dating and he was he proposed marriage to Cindy, but before he did it, he went over to Lindsay and said, Are you sure? And that just pissed me off to no end that he wanted to check in with Lindsay and make sure there was no chance with her first before going to Cindy. And that just pissed me off to no end. And then him and Cindy dated for a few months and it didn't work out. And he they broke up because not only did Cindy have personal issues that she needed to deal with, and which he thought maybe Counseling would help, but Cindy didn't want to do that because some of the, the issues were mainly just her. They weren't her and Richie. She liked Richie, um, but there was some internal stuff, and she was um, obsessed with a work, and she was writing a book. 
So there's some of that stuff going on. But um, so Richie, at this point, the beginning of the book, they're completely broken up. But the lady, Richie had an experience um, that he fell in love with his a police intern who turned out to be a psychotic serial killer and they didn't know it. And then he had a relationship with this other lady and they broke up over politics. And I can see that happening. So um, Yuki is our attorney and she's with Brady and um, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm messing this up. And Lindsay and Joe, and they have a daughter, Julie, and Martha is the dog. And Claire, we don't see too much of Claire this particular book. Uh, she's the medical examiner. And uh, so, and Cindy, our reporter. She's off on a book tour. She's promoting a book. She wrote a book about the serial killer fish um, and how he manipulated Morales, who was the girl that Jacoby fell in love with. So we've got those issues going on, too. So Yuki gets a request um, for to work for Peanuts. Here she is a, you know, a DA for the city making mega bucks. And she's offered a job in a, 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 a non-profit self-help uh, for very little money. And, but it's the case that hooks her. So she quits her job and goes to work for the defense league. Apparently, and this is which I could see this happening and it's always a fear. There was a mentally challenged individual who may have been, uh, yeah, he was 15, but his mental age was way less. And he and a friend of his witnessed something, an, an incident of a shooting and killing and burglary. And he picked up the gun and was running away with it when the police captured him. And even though he didn't do anything other than pick up the gun, they framed him, railroaded him, told him he could go home if he told them what happened. They told him what happened. He repeated it back. And they locked him up in jail, and he was murdered in jail. And it comes out later that a cop wanted him murdered. So the whole thing with this little boy was framed six ways to Sunday. And Yuki takes the case. And she, her, her, she's going up against her old boss, Parisi. And it's a very emotional case. This child was railroaded to death. And I can see that happening. I really can see that. It probably happens uh, quite often. If someone's not there to stand up for the mentally handicapped child or individual or the dementia person, they will get railroaded because the cops want um, maybe they're hiding something or maybe they just want to solve the case and move on to the next one. But it does happen. You see it all the time on TV. And it's, it was just this kid lost his life. So Yuki took the case. And there were some twists and turns in this. And Yuki's case helps solve the bigger case. Lindsay and Conklin, Jacoby and Brady, they've got this other case where four men are impersonating police officers. They're wearing San Francisco Police Department wind jackets. And are they impersonating police? That's the big question through the whole book. Are they impersonating or are they really cops who've gone seriously badly wrong? They're robbing check cashing places and uh, pretending to be police officers when they first go in and then making the person open the safe. And then they start murdering the people in the store 
when they after they robbed the place. Then they get wind of a narcotics bus going down, a very large narcotic bus. And they decide they're going to do it instead. And they go in and they kill a massacre of people and they get all the drugs and all the money. And then they kill, start killing families. And are these families innocent? Well, the families themselves are innocent, but the guys may not be innocent because they're police officers and they're people that Lindsay knows. So is why are they killing this guy? Why was he killed? And that leads them to believe that maybe whoever's in charge of this group is cleaning it up before the case is solved so no one can testify against each other. They should have left with the millions while they had it. Um, then there's, um, they celebrate Claire's birthday and they're at Susie's. The, the ladies are at Susie's, the murder club's at Susie's. That's their favorite place to meet. And Lindsay has to leave for a case. And Clara brings up the fact that the past several years, Lindsay's had to leave in the middle of her birthday party. And Lindsay didn't realize that. And she brings it up with Joe. So while Lindsay is busy with these cop killings or cash, check cashing place killings, Joe is investigating um, the C, the CBM, he calls it, Claire's birthday murders. And he finds a lot of information. There have been five or six women that have been killed on May 5th, I think. Uh, or no, May 12th. And it, it, all the little clues are there. And Joe does a really good job. Oh, also, I should mention another thing with the character progression is that Joe's was fired in the first page of the book. His boss called him up and fired him. And so he waited till 3 o'clock in the morning to tell his boss, you fired me before I got a chance to tell you I solved the case, but because we signed the confidentiality agreement, I deleted everything. And so that taught his boss, his ex-boss a thing or two. Um, so we've got Yuki and her defense league case with the child mentally ch challenged handicap. Um, Joe's been fired, so Yuki quits her job. Joe quits his, is fired from his job. Yuki is doing the defense league. Joe is investigating the CBMs, Claire birthday murders. Uh, Lindsay is caught up with the check cashing murders. And they always talk about how low staff they are and how there isn't money to pay for more police officers in their district. And, um, So there's all that going on. And in the end, it becomes very complicated and there's lots of twists. Um, Joe gets himself in trouble. Lindsay is in a difficult position. Uh, Richie gets uh, injured severely. Um, there's a couple of cliffhangers at the end. One with Cindy and Richie because we he's been severely injured. There's also one with Joe and Lindsay. He had a difficult situation and his life was put in jeopardy. And at the very end, the very last line of the book, and maybe to clear it up in book 15, Lindsay lies to Joe. She gets a threatening phone call 
and she lies to Joe about it. So I'm a little pissed off about that. Maybe it'll be cleared up in book 15. So it was a good, very fast read. Um, I got through it in just a few hours. Um, even in the middle of watching, actually during commercials. I'm a good commercial reader. Um, when uh, Roots first came out, I read the entire book during commercials. Seriously, the entire book in one day during commercials. Back then I was uh, Regis and Kathy Lee and uh, I forget what was on at 10. But Oprah and General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Another World. I'm a series person. I like series. I was over the summer too, I'm pretty sure. Because otherwise I would have been in school. But anyways, um, dead, the 14th Deadly Sins. And we have to credit Yuki for solving the case that the cops couldn't solve. It's her case that solves the whole shebang. And uh, we'll see what happens in the next one. We'll see what book Chrissy picks up next. Don't forget Flashback Mondays, Star Trek Fridays, and my new series, If Then. And enjoy your beautiful March day. Have a good one. And you want to say goodbye? You want to say goodbye? Nope. <laughs> All right. Goodbye.